Why do you do this job? Because I'm stupid. Why do you do the job? I love it. Tucked away down a Wrexham side street, you might not know it was there, but for the odd telltale sign. Everybody uses the back door, nobody uses the front door. Here in North Wales, George Powell runs a home taking in, amongst others, kids in care. We do have several youngsters who come in in temper and they, this tends to be their punching wall as they, as they go along. We have had lots of holes in this wall over the years uh, where they take the temper out on the wall which we really don't mind, we fell and replaster it. Um, it's better than hitting somebody. Councils pay Mr Powell to look after vulnerable teenagers in what's called supported accommodation to teach them how to be independent. We get phone calls from all over the country. We, we've done care from kids from London, Manchester, Lancashire, um, down south, um, and lots from around Wales as well. I have heard young people crying at night, um, very upset that, you know, and, and it can be really scary if you think about it, they're 16, 17 years old and they've been dropped off with people they don't know. It is always hard, whether you be 16, 20 miles down the road, which it was for me, or, or two, three hundred miles, like I've met other children throughout the years, it's really hard and a lot of the time it... <laughs> They always end up wanting to go back, and me, myself, I wanted to go back almost instantly. Sent to George's by a council outside Wrexham, Kyle lived here for several years while in care. Those first months were difficult. I think you did try to get home. Oh yeah, I, I walked. I walked all the way to, it was about 18 miles, I walked there one day. Because um, you just didn't want to not be there? I, I didn't want to not be there. Tonight, a hard-hitting report, seen first by Newsnight, details sharp rises in the numbers of children in care being sent by English councils to live away from where they come from. 41% are now in placements out of area, according to an all-party parliamentary group. Its research with the Children's Society shows that rises to 59% for kids in care living in children's homes and unregulated accommodation for over 16s. There's been a 77% rise in the numbers of children sent to live in children's homes out of area since 2012. The councils making those decisions are driving criminality, says the chair of the parliamentary group. The risk to these ch children is being escalated because of their isolation in a place where they have no friends um, or associates. Local councils are unwittingly acting as recruiting sergeants for criminal gangs who would wish to exploit that child's isolation for criminal purposes. It's something this teenager we're calling Samantha has experienced firsthand. Taken into care age 12, she was then targeted by paedophiles. Her local authorities sent her more than 200 miles away to Scotland to try to protect her, but Samantha says it made things worse. It just felt like I was being punished in a way. I had been taken away from my family and put into care and I was now somewhere that I didn't want to be. I just couldn't believe that they could move somebody so far. It just made it worse down to the fact that I wasn't given the right support. I was left to slip and slip and slip deeper and deeper. The groomers found her in her first placement, so Samantha had to be moved again and ended up in a children's home in Wales. There, she befriended a boy, and they were both then targeted by a gang of men who began to exploit them. Him to carry drugs and weapons, her for sex. Whilst I was living in Wales, I was part of another grooming process. I was sexually abused again. With the boy, he had got further and deeper into this stuff, to the extent that these guys were kicking down the care home door. These guys were non-stop trying to get at this boy. I do believe care homes are targeted by paedophiles and groomers, because they know, as sad as it is, children out of area are the easiest sort of child to go for because they don't have anybody. And that's how they get them, because they don't have anybody, and it is such a shame. I firmly believe that it just opens up a mass opportunity for these people to do what they want to do. Tonight's parliamentary report says children in care are often sent away, not because it's in their best interests, but because there are no local placements available. It says three quarters of all children's homes are privately run and are concentrated in three areas in England, the North West, the West Midlands and the South East. We're in a crisis in the care system. 
how we're caring for children that are our responsibility is simply not good enough. We've heard from a number of children about how it feels for them and they've described how miserable and unhappy they feel, how isolated they feel, the fact that nobody cares for them, they feel that there's nobody that they can actually trust. But amid those stories of chronic misery and loneliness, two stories stand out. One of a boy who attempted to hang himself on Christmas Day and a girl who tried to walk 10 miles home. And Coffee's report also flags up what it calls the frightening world of semi-independent accommodation. Thousands of 16 and 17 year olds are now being sent out of area to live in these homes which in England and Wales are entirely unregulated. These placements have increased 97% in just four years. We've come to the first floor, the five bedrooms on the first floor. For months, Newsnight's been investigating what we've called these hidden children's homes. Our tour of George's Wrexham house is the first time we've been invited to film inside one. This is a typical bedroom of what they have. Um, all the bedrooms have laminate flooring and then they tend to have their own little fridge freezer. The support George, his partner and staff offer the children in their care is intensive. We live in the loft and um, that so would, your... yeah, and that we have our bedroom and thing up stairs so if they ever need any support they just knock on the door. Would you say that this is a very different setup and situation to a lot of the similar type of supported accommodation that's out there? We know it is yeah because we're told all the time by the police and social services and that that um, the professionals who come on site are amazed how differently we work to other setups and that. In a good way. Yeah, uh, well I think that justifies our success rate with young people really, that the, the way we work is different. So, and we've had some tremendous successes with young people over the years. Those successes include Kyle, who now has a job and his own family. He believes out of area placements like his can be beneficial to cut damaging associations, but only with the right help. A lot of people, they, they took, they took two, three hundred miles away, they dropped off and they left to it. When I was took out of borough to here, I was given a lot of support by George. I was never left alone. I was always, I was sort of looked, af looked after as it is, you know, you looked after child. And that's what I was, I was a looked after child and, and supported by him. But particularly in this unregulated, uninspected sector, children are being failed, says George. His descriptions of what he's witnessed from other providers mirrors what we've previously uncovered in our series. I've been to some accommodations where one young person was placed where there was no windows in the room that he was in, uh, which I found quite un unacceptable, really. There's a couple of youngsters who have been uh, placed in accommodation where they don't see anybody, nobody checks on them, nobody's trying to find them employment, um, nobody's given them any support, they're just left on their own. Uh, but the landlords and the agents um, take the fees. Is there money to be made? There's lots of money to be made out of this sector, yeah, if you want to. By charging councils a lot of money? Yeah, the, um, councils are desperate sometimes to place young people. The parliamentary report calls for regulation and inspection of these kind of homes. George Powell, who's running one, agrees. You can exploit these young people. You, you just can. It's just... So some of the young people we have in our care are very, very vulnerable. We need to get our heads together and get this sorted so these young people aren't being exploited. And what keeps you awake at night? When youngsters aren't in, I tend not to sleep, to tell the truth. Um, if, if they're all in and they're all tucked up nicely, I'm not saying they stay in bed, because I know they don't, yeah. But if they all come on time and that, I tend to get a good night's sleep. That report by Katie Razzle. Well, tonight the Department for Education told us we are building our evidence base to better understand how unregulated accommodation or out-of-area placements are used. We're also improving how local areas respond when a child in care goes missing and helping local areas tackle the risks vulnerable young people face. The Welsh Government added local authorities responsible for ensuring the children and young people they look after are placed in suitable, safe accommodation as close to their home wherever possible.